minister and bless your children. Thank you for this platform. You've ordained it as a fountain and as a bakery where you dish out the bread of life for the hungry and those that are thirsty for fruits. Those that desire to do exploits for you. Those that have the hunger and dream not just to serve you but to last. This year you've given us a burden. Father, open the heavens. Come down in your majesty and help our lives. Bless us indeed and make us a blessing. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Amen. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7. Acts 7. Verses 22 and 23. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. We are taking our opening charge. And we'll be looking at the mystery of burden. The mystery of burden. Godly burdens originate from God. It carries weight and comes to a man, to a woman with grave responsibilities. The mystery of burden is that it normally comes As if God does not mean business. Many a times it looks so casual. It looks so small. But the thing is weighty.
when Moses was full 40 years something happened to him and in him but what transpired that day and moment To a casual Bible reader, it will be difficult for you to discover it. But that's how burden bearing and burden itself normally begins. When he was full 40 years old, see what happened and it came into his heart that is the mystery of body it dropped into his spirit like a thought Somebody dropped it and dropped it inside somebody. When he was full 40 years, it came into his heart. That's all. That's why I will beg you to listen with your heart in this meeting. Everything about Moses, 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 Moses began that day. The writing of Genesis, the writing of Exodus, the communion he enjoyed with Yahweh, the favors he found speaking with God face to face. That man's finger became the finger of God. Magicians knew it. What came into his heart that you normally we read casually was a heavy burden that was to be delivered in Egypt. Tell Pharaoh that's the depot. Are you hearing me? That thing that happened that day and said, Go and check how your brethren are doing. That's all. was what happened to Pa Elton of the blessed memory. A white man. Are you hearing me? I, I had no idea how old he was. I don't know, didn't know what he was doing that time. But from the light of the scriptures, I could say that it came 
to his heart. The load came. The responsibility came. The necessity came. The burden came. Is that clear? Then, where am I to deliver it? God said, Nigeria. You know our burden, delivering the burden. I hope you know. It came to his heart. Something entered into his heart. Like a mustard seed. As we progress, God giving me the allowance, I will buy time to show you that great and mighty things are always driven by little, little things. Little droplet of idea, thought. That is what we have just read. When Moses was full 40 years, nothing subtracted, it came into his heart. Are you hearing me? That was actually a very heavy body. But it entered so small and casually like that as if the thing was not serious. But with time, with time, the thing was, you know, getting expanding expanding inside that little seed of thought was the responsibility to carry for 40 years something close to 6 million human beings. But see how the thing dropped. You know I'm talking to you. You know we are talking to ourselves. That was how God found a Mary's lesson. A Scottish young girl. Very beautiful. Some few weeks ahead of her she would have had her wedding and married to a Scottish young man and enjoyed herself. But then, there was this interruption. Something entered her heart like a tiny mustard seed. It came to her heart. You are not hearing me. Are you hearing me now? It came to her heart. You know we are talking about delivering the body. From the little informations I scouted about Mary Slessor, she was in one small conference like that. Very small, not a numerically big. One season, the servant of God came as the speaker of the day. The man did not begin to talk about 21 steps to making it. Or how to pray dangerous prayers for your enemies to die. Or, excuse me, can I prophesy? And somebody will say, prophesy, sir. That was not what that man was doing that day. That man meant business. The man started talking about dark 
Africa, Dark Africa, in particular, a West African country named Nigeria. And what the devil and darkness was doing there and said, can you hear God's voice inside this invoice? Who we go, who we go, who we go? I heard she was the only one that answered the altar call. The mystery of burden. It doesn't come in the size of elephant. It comes so small. Can I be sure? Are you, are you listening? Yes. Hello, sir. She, she knelt down that day. She knelt down that day. As if the thing was a joke. Talk to God, to God young girl. She did. When I get to heaven, I will confirm. I'm not sure the preacher heard what she told God. But she spoke something to God. And God heard. And the heavenly secretary noted it. I hear me now. It dropped like a mustard seed. Are you hearing me? Another question is where will I deliver this burden? God said Calabar. From Scotland are you hearing me? To Calabar by ship how many kilometers and then how and how Will she handle the terrain so as to deliver this body that has entered her heart? God pointed at a particular destination and said, Deliver the body there. She called. Her fiancé. And said. The lady you are looking at now. Is no longer the Mary lesson you used to know. The body is still the same. But the heart and mindset and value system is no longer the same. I dream the dream. I am the one paraphrasing it. Will you join my dream? My new dream? The old dreams are gone and dead. The man said, what a fucking bullshit are you talking about? She said, fine. It's not bullshit now. I will no longer marry you. I am married to a new husband. His name is Emmanuel. And both of us are going to a country called Nigeria. Specifically, Calabar. You see this pregnancy? Yeah! God said, I should deliver it there. I don't like the way you are looking at me. Are you catching what I'm talking about? When Moses, when Mary Slessor, when Pa'effing was full 40 years, what happened to them? And it came where? Into their heart. No noise, no earthquake, no tongue talking. The thing landed. Boom. 
before anybody could know it, the thing became a burden. She wrote to Scottish authorities boarded ship gathered little money stuffed in her pocket landed in Calabar can't remember precisely the year I was in Calabar at that time physically speaking I was there to take a conference somebody said to me will you like to see the house and place where Mary Slesso labored and died and commanded that her body should be buried there. They buried her there. She did not marry again. Did not produce any child to replace her or to carry on her name. And just, now look at you. Just look at yourself. Just look at yourself. In the day of recompense, what did you do that God will reward? Will you stand on the premise where Mary Slesser will stand that day? Will you stand where Pa'a Elton will stand when God will be bringing his omnipotent hand like this and he'll be saying, well done, thou faithful servant. Over there are your mansions. What have you done that God will reward? See what men and women sacrificed because of body. See what you have refused to sacrifice because you are selfish. Because you are looking at the multitude and the kind of messages that people preach these days. Me, I know, go suffer. I know, go beg for bread. God of miracle na my papa This kind of thing if you listen to this kind of message it looks as if this thing is biblical but it has some poison some poisons are inside that kind of thing What we do as ministry nowadays and what we do and as churches, we do it, we run it year after year, 365 days, 365 days like that, 30 years anniversary. We cannot produce a marriage lesson. We cannot produce a par Elton. We cannot produce men and women that are dead to fame, to popularity, and to mammon. Vessels that we say, if I perish, I perish, provided that the Jews are not annihilated. I rather sacrifice myself than to see my people perish. Can I be sure? Are we together? Um, Nehemiah chapter 2. You, 
in chapter 2? Are you, are you there? Verses 11 and 12. So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. Are you listening? Now, what was that? What was it that made Nehemiah live thriving, bubbling Babylon? He had a very lucrative job there. Always in the palace. The king's copier. Are we together? Look at him saying here, I am now in ruined, damaged, Jerusalem with 70 years decay. What happened to Nehemiah that made him leave a lucrative job? Leave something similar to America. The other time I was in a meeting, somebody was Vying that they should give him opportunity to testify that God gave him an American visa. He collected almost 30 minutes from that meeting just to say, I, I, I got an American visa. Babylon was like that. You are not getting my point. Talk to me. Are you getting my point? Now, what happened? Look at him. Look at his testimony. He said, so I came to Jerusalem and I was there three days. A ruined city. Look at your family. Look at our nation. Look at the body of Christ. A ruined city. Why are you not leaving your comfort zone to make your contribution in the kingdom? Why? You are burdenless. Your I don't care attitude is too much. Am I a politician? Which one is my own there? Let them kill themselves there. Hello, sir. Now that we are, we were coming just now, that bend there, this brother just drove directly opposite us. Is a lady, very pretty, standing there with bare breasts and almost pants, waiting for customer. In fact, when we were coming, she was positioning herself very well, thinking that maybe we are a customer and it doesn't bother you. When the day breaks, she will appear a responsible girl. But in the night, these are wolves. And it doesn't bother you. Go out there, just there. Is that clear? Go and see cars. Push your cars. Serious cars. These men that are there drinking and fornicating with ladies, they have wives and children who are asking their mom, where is daddy? Where is daddy? And uh, the mom will say, please don't implicate me. You know your daddy, she's a, he's a lion, he's a tiger. I can't even tell where he is. Maybe by 1 a.m. this tiger will come back knock 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 and maybe the woman might have slept she will, he will break the door and 
then deal with the woman ruthlessly for 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 keeping him standing for one minute. You are not getting what I'm talking about? Talk to me. Are you getting it? You are too comfortable in your comfort zone. You are full of yourself and full of your own problem. This man came to a ruined city. If it were to be today, if they dash you Jerusalem, you won't take. There is nothing there. Physically speaking, economically speaking, academically speaking, socially speaking, there's nothing to write home about when it comes to Jerusalem. But this man saw beyond the physical that this is the city of the living God. No matter how ruined, this is where the Messiah we are waiting for. Is that clear? We come from. See what happened that made him leave Babylon. Verse what now? And I arose in the night. When did he arose? In the night. Have you seen it now? If you are sensitive in, in the spirit, you will discover that all things work together for good. I don't know about your quarter, quarter, where you are coming from. For four days now, solid four days going to five now, we've not had any Nepalite. It happened to Nehemiah. Rather than complain about total blackout for four days, he maximized it to wake up. I pray that God will send more mosquitoes to you. See how you go busy complaining, complaining. Then provide the solution. Wake up, maximize that darkness. And I arose in the night. Can I hear, man? and some few men with me. Now look at the problem you will begin to have. Kingdom work is not for multitude. You that is looking for one million followers online, you are, you are fooling yourself. I and how many people, ladies and gentlemen, few men that were with me who bought into my vision and into my dream, there were few. He said, let us maximize this total blackout. Let's turn it into something positive. Let us use it to spy the land. Can't you use your dark nights to spy the land in prayers? Can't you spy your family? Can't you see what the devil is doing? He arose. Can I hear, man? I and few men that agreed with my calling. You are the one looking for multitude and crowd. Are you there? Neither told I any man what my God did what? Talk to me. Did what? Talk to me. Did what? My God did what? Eh? What my God had what? Put where? In my heart. To do what? Did he say to preach? 
Talk to me. To do what? To do. At where? At Babylon? Eh? At Jerusalem. Neither was there any beast with me save the beast that I rode upon. Hello, man of God. See now. What came as a thought in the heart of this man? The delivery spot. Is that clear? The thing happened in Babylon. It entered his heart in Babylon. Talk to me. Where was he to deliver it? Eh? That's where to deliver it. Because this is opening church. I won't start going into you know, details and uh, deeper expositions or opening many windows. No. It will overstretch what we, we are sharing. Now listen to me. Do you know how the body came? Somebody came visiting. Somebody came to Babylon. Talk to me. From Jerusalem. I think his cousin or uncle somebody like that. Are you hearing me? Came from that ruined city to a bubbling city, Babylon. Babylon. Papa. Ladies were like that. And uh, things, you know, imagine America. If you, have, if you don't know America, it's a, it's a free nation. Free. That you are free even to walk naked. You are free as a human being to marry pussycat. And churches are free to wed you. Yes. Will you take this pussycat to be your lovely wedded wife? And pussycat will say meow. And then they, they will bind two of you. You are the one saying fire. That's what is happening. People marry dogs. That man came to Babylon burdened and bothered. What did I say now? Burdened and bothered. The burden did not allow him to see naked ladies. It did not allow him to see people that rub and cake and lipstick and eyelashes. Those that were throwing parties and enjoying themselves. The man was seen differently. Can I hear man? He visited the palace. Nehemiah looked at him and said, Bro, how far? How is our father's land? He said, As you can see from my body, that nothing is well. The body came. Can I be sure? Are you getting my point? As you go to social media, beyond social media, around your immediate environment, the other time I saw where a lady poured raw acid on another lady and said, why are you trying to snatch my babe? You want to take my babe. When you see that kind of thing, how dare you say that all is well? Ritualists are multiplying. Every tree almost in Ibo land is now wearing clothes. Whereas ladies are walking naked, trees are being clothed. It doesn't bother you. You are doing praise nights, dancing away this thing. No wonder. Are you hearing me? No wonder the Bible said concerning David when he was laboring to bring back the presence of God. 
out of the due order. Do you know what heaven said? Heaven said, David played. Anything out of God's due order. What are you doing? You are playing. The word of God said David and his men played before the Lord. It was play play. God just saw play play. Human beings saw a move. They saw a revival. God saw people that are playing. Say you people are playing. You are not praying. You are not serious. This thing is not after the due order. They began exactly huh? to carry, carry God's ark. God's ark. Is that clear? On a new cart. Something that looked like a palms. As if they are carrying coffee. God said, don't worry. I have a place where I test every move. When this thing gets there, I will know whether it is according to my order. The Bible said, the new cart came to Nacon's threshing floor. A very rough ground. Then the oxen shook. The revival, the move, caved in. The ark shifted. Wanting to fall. Oza, you know what I'm talking about? One of the pallet drivers. Who had zeal without knowledge killed himself that day? We may be praying from now, from any moment from now. At least I've given you one or two, three witnesses. The mystery of body is that it doesn't actually come as body. At times it comes as concern. Whenever you hear somebody say, I am concerned. I am troubled in my spirit. Hmm. Just know that God is beginning to drop something. It comes like mustard seed. When we come from tomorrow, we will now begin to talk about how then is that clear? Do I carry this body? Eat that here in my stomach or on my shoulder? I don't know the tonnage that God has laid on you or is about laying on you. Then we will now check about the roadworthiness, roadworthiness of your heart. I hope you know it is not every vehicle that is roadworthy. Talk to me. Talk. Confirm. Is it the, all the vehicles you see that is roadworthy? Talk to me. No. Several vehicles that you drove your past that became stranded, the team broke and became stranded in the middle of the road. When that vehicle was taken off, talk to me, nobody knew that this thing will not deliver. One little ligament, one serious chain gallops can scatter a wire. Propeller may break. You are not getting my point? Your car may begin to feel and have overheat because of hold up. You have not seen ladies. Their vehicle, their heart, their zeal for Jesus, their prayer life started having overheat. When they had delay in marriage. 
45 years no man was coming. This is a serious hold up. Not just go slow. The engine started heating smokes everywhere. Are you roadworthy? Are you sure you will carry this thing to the destination appointed by you by God's predestination? Are you sure you like this? Do you have shock absorber? Now, before I conclude, I hope you know it is very, very dangerous, extremely dangerous to put a load on a vehicle and ask a learner to deliver it. You see, you are not talking to me. Are you talking to me? Are you hearing me now? Is it correct? Uh -huh. I see some of you. You are still a learner. Even though you have learner's permit. Crying for anointing. Oh God, anoint me. I want to shake the whole world. God is not looking for somebody that will shake the whole world. He wants somebody that he will shake. To know the stuff you are made of. Are we together? Conclusively. Exodus. 24. there 9 to 11 9 to 11 Exodus then went up Moses and Aaron Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel excuse me what did they do what happened that day eh? it was Moses alone that used to see God I hear me now. It was Moses alone that used to see God speak with God face to face. That day, Moses said, the elders of Israel, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, they need to also see God. Nobody will see God, even the God of the Bible, God of Israel, I tell you, I remain the same. If you see God, your business will change. If you stop seeing your uncles, you stop seeing your inferiority complex, you, you need to stop seeing some things and look for God to see God. You need to address verse, 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 even the veil of depression. Some of you, you are beginning to say, I think I am tired of this life. What will worsen the situation is you like this being persuaded or seduced by hell to kill yourself. Devil will put you in the hottest hell. After all the Holy Ghost fire you called on him and his kingdom. At the end of the day, you ended your race at his feet. Moses. Can I hear me? probably begged God and said, it is not enough if I am the only one that sees you. Then look at the point. They take away what you are taking away. Are you listening? Now, and they saw the God of Israel. Excuse me. 
which God did they see? Eh? Eh? Talk to me. Go Google. Answer me. Get that funky boon. It's not Makovia. You need to note what they saw that made them what they became. For Aaron to become the high priest. Let me hear, man. Nedab and Abayu. To become God's servants, they need to see God they are coming to serve. And then the 70 elders that we see God and then prepare the coming generation. To tell them that, look, God is real. Can I hear, man? I have seen him. We have many puppeteers who are preaching God they have never seen. They have never seen him. They don't know him. You are bound to misrepresent a man you, you don't know very well and you are trying to preach him. I hope you are listening. Now, the word of God said they saw <laughs> the God of Israel and there was under his feet as it were what? A paved walk of a sapphire stone and as it were and as it were and as it were I, I am repeating myself. Are you there with me? And as it were the body of heaven in his clearness. What we are taking away for tonight. For tonight is. Paul said. As we talk about body. Delivering the body. Carrying this thing. From the spot where you got it. Paving the way. Fighting all the battles. Enduring all the crises. Criticisms, hatred, persecutions, afflictions, at times even sickness, lack, even surplus, insults. And at the end of the day, you are at the delivery spot. Paul said, it doesn't happen in a cheap way. You need another body another vehicle the body of heaven can I hear me mm -hmm. must carry the internal organs of heaven that's what Paul meant when he said we have these treasures we are yeah. physically speaking the body may look at it. But what is inside is heavenly. Heavenly and at the same time heavy. Are you hearing me? Jesus said to his disciples, for you to be able to deliver and deliver well, he said, I will give you another mouth. Have you seen it now? another mouth. Not that they don't have mouth, but he said, with this kind of mouth, you can deliver. And in the realms of the spirit, in God's supermarket, there is no bonanza, bonanza, bonanza. Everything carries price tag. If you need another mouth, check the price tag. Are you getting my point? If you want to deal with the devil in your own generation and snatch away all of his captives and bring all of them at the feet of Jesus, you need another body. 
This body you carry now, Paul called it the body of sin. You are, some of you, there are ladies you have not seen. No. There are beauties and handsomeness you have not seen. No. When you try to tell us that sisters down here in Africa who dresses well, manageably, is seducing you, what then will you do when you will meet men on horses? Imagine God impregnating you now with a burden and he says, go and deliver it among the prostitutes. I hope you know you can't deliver that kind of body with this kind of body. You are not getting my point. Are you getting my point? You need another body, another tongue, another eye, another feet. You cannot carry the head of gold with the feet of clay. If you jam stone, Uncle, if you jam opposition, Uncle, When the occult will begin to fire the arrows, and you are just carrying the body of clay, one arrow will gun you down. Delivering the body. Only God knows the destination. Some of you are going to be businessmen. God will make you treasurers of his kingdom in a time like this. Have you got to what it takes to handle mammon? Little, what we call tokumboka, fairly used here. Even some of the things we drive is not even fairly used. Immediately you got one of those cars. The way you walk changed. Do you know what you did to yourself? You shocked heaven. You know what heaven said? Heaven said, put him, put her on probation. We can't trust him beyond this. Look at pride. Lay eggs because of Tokumboka. Because of 300 million naira in your account. We are going to pray now. I said, Bodin, kingdom godly Bodin, many a times, they are so mysterious. It doesn't come the way you expect it. It can enter your heart like this, like a tiny mustard seed of thought and drop there. But this thing, if you handle it well, it can sweep away nations. That's the opening charge. The thing is a mystery. Jesus said it in Luke 13, yes? Verse 19. He said the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. What will make you great just like a mustard seed. What will even destroy you is just a little a little error, little mistake, little dead flies in your perfume. The perfume is finished. A man that is held in an honor dare not misbehave. O Sito Sadebe, a father in Ibo land who sang before he died, a high life, a musician. He said, Onya ne kiri e kiri adromi bontu. Onyane kiri e kiri. Emerogeni. Adiromi. Ibiazi aboba aboy. Oblun tuki ina abona public. Ane kiri ge kiri. Do you know how many people that looks up to you as a role model? Look at what you are doing. You are damaging generations. People that call you uncle. Some call you mommy. Some call you brother. Some call you sister. Dine negaraganya. Look at what you are showing them as examples.
Paeti. John Knox said to God, give me Scotland or I die. Check your own prayer point. Oh God, I will not die poor. I will never die poor. I will never die poor. Money, I command you. Money, I command you. John Knox, we'll be looking at you from the galleries of heaven. And he's saying, which, who, who, who born this one? Is it the same specimen that with which I was born in Christ that this one was also born. Give me Scotland or you kill me. In summary, you like this, Mary Slesso landed in Calabar. According to history, that was the season in which the Obong, the king of Calabar, died. Tradition demands that that man will not be buried with anything less than at least, I think they said, seven human heads. That's what she stepped into. What entered into her heart in Scotland as a tiny seed is now bl blossoming. The thing is now forming a ministry. It is now a mantle, but it began as a thought. As a body, that some people are eating human beings, are eating human beings. That time they used to call Africa dark continent. These people brought light. Today we have stylish preachers who do Jericho's. And that's the people you copy. Are you sure you will deliver the body like this? We have preachers who are marrying three wives. And they are telling us that their liberty in Christ is giving them the license to do so. I can go on and on and on. But then... This is something you have to chew. As for me, me like this, what you call and see in Vela of Hebron today, it started like that. It came to my heart. That this, what we have today, is not the church that Jesus Christ died for. See how weak we are. The other time I was in a church, a lady, Pentecostal lady, that speaks in tongues. Mwa da da kulu da da bia. Sisi dedicate here. How? I started asking questions. Pentecostal lady. My neighbor in the yard that is not even born again. Servant of the devil. I Pentecostal lady in her tongues. But into what the Satan's daughter said. And then it came to my heart. It entered my heart that no. There was a time when every scent you see was a burning stone. A heart not for hell to crack. Seducers and seductresses can't seduce this one. The seed of the Lord is in him. That's what we labor for. That's why we have this bringing many sons to glory. That's how we started. 
see where we are today. We've not even gotten to the de destination. We are going to pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. My Jesus today, my Jesus tomorrow, my Jesus forever, wonderful man, open your mouth, my Jesus today. My Jesus, tomorrow, open your mouth. My Jesus, forever, what a wonderful night. My Jesus, today, today, sing it with me. My Jesus, tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, my Jesus forever. You are a wonderful man, my Jesus today. Saxophonist, my Jesus tomorrow, tomorrow, my Jesus forever. Ho 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 haba haba bada 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 Sing it one more time my Jesus today 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 Tomorrow 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 my Jesus forever Talk to God. There's nothing in your heart except what the devil has loaded you with. Hello, madam. Look at what the devil is doing even to your children. You are not bothered. Talk more of getting burdened. Look at what the devil is doing in our society. Preach a man. What are you preaching? Singing us out of our problems. My Jesus today. My Jesus tomorrow. It's a confession. My Jesus forever. Hello, man. If I go move back, he's saying, "Oh, I've been with you guys for not that long, but yeah." If I catch you, they can't get no work, yeah. If we join another, now back at Zimbabwe, the tears of your wife doesn't bother you. What a wicked soul you are! 
for the wicked soul you are. You mean you are created just for beer and cigarettes and fornication? Is that why God made you a man? You are a burden to us. You are a trouble of Israel. And you are also troubling your own family. You are a wonderful man. My Jesus today. My Jesus tomorrow. Abia. My Savior forever. Hey, yeah. You are a wonderful man. Sing it one more time. My Jesus today. My Jesus tomorrow. Tomorrow. My Savior forever. Pastor, pray. Emmanuel, we must deliver this body. Come what may. Come what may. This is not our destination. No? This is not our predestination. God in his determinate counsel has predestined the destination for us. And that destination is the feet of Christ. I need no It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Do you know, do you excuse me, musicians? Wait. Do, do you know why? Do you know why Yahoo boys are boasting? Do you know why they do what they do? Even armed robbers who are robbing people with AK-49, they said. We have pastors that we pay tithes to. We have pastors that are praying for us, praying for this business. Wonderful man. <laughs> My Jesus today. My Jesus, Jesus tomorrow. 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 My Jesus forever. Wherever you are watching us from, check yourself. Where is the body in God laid in your heart to deliver in a destination? Where you are now, is that the destination? What you are doing, is that the delivery? What are you delivering? What are you delivering? Talk to God. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I was listening to Renhard Bonke. In one of his uh, crusade campaign. campaigns. He said, I am a German. God called me and showed me Africa. 
vieux scellé. He became pregnant in Germany. Go to Africa and deliver it, say it the Lord. The stories that followed is a story for another day. The attacks. He made a statement. Said I am a German. I can't speak English. God said go and learn English. Provided you deliver. You are inexcusable, oh man. God does not take excuses. Say, you know, I, 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 I did not school. Yes. You know God forgot. You think God is forgetful like yourself. D.L. Moody did not school. Wiggly Sword did not school. Charles Potchon did not school. They schooled themselves. So as to deliver this body. When I look at William Kumuyi, I see him advancing in his own pregnancy. Is you. You need to answer God tonight. What happened to the pregnancy? You aborted it? You used to be pregnant before. What happened? You didn't deliver anything. Where is the pregnancy?
ask the Lord to help you not to waste burden. it mm. Lord to help you not to waste body father was talking God was pointing to men and women that caught body we pray of Jesus Father, we as we continue in this meeting, may it please you, O oh God, to equip us with that consciousness to identify and to lay hold on your body. Equip us with that consciousness to be able to lay hold to retain the weight that you are bringing on our inner man Lord it's not that you have not brought burden before now but it's just that our heart is porous please change this heart for us Please do a work, a surgical work in this camp in our life. Change this kind of heart. Give us the kind of hand that has the ability to retain eternal things. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, change this our heart. Take away roadside hearts. Lord, give us the kind of hearts that will retain your body. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Please be seated briefly. Shortly we'll be off from here. Please watch and make this announcement. Let the food be brought out from the 